Thanks for joining us today at Ligari Products. We're about to show you floor kit number five. If you're ready to transform your floors, check the description below for more information. Enjoy the video. ready for the base coat and highlights. You've already prepped the floor, you've taped everything off, you've put the primer down, and so this is kit number five. This is gonna be kind of a copper patina look. We're gonna go with a copper base with some moss green highlights, and then we're going to disperse it with a little more moss highlights. So everything should be taped off. We're gonna do a 135 square foot section. So as I explained before, you're gonna to wanna to tape off the walls, for each section and I want to show you how to do each section so if I was to do this section then somebody would have a base coat for me after I'm done with the highlights for the next section and you just continue to move on your floor that's why it's good to get help so I'm gonna take this is a three gallon kit again with the copper and I'm gonna pour it about a foot from my edges on the section I want to do It's important when you're walking in these spikes that you walk very sure-footed. So you don't want to be like leaning out over the spikes a lot because you could really twist your ankle and, and get off balance. You want to walk very flat-footed. It feels funny, but that's the way you should really walk in these. So what I want to do is take my squeegee. Now obviously guys, you're going to be doing this a lot faster than me. I'm going to be stopping explaining uh, very carefully. Otherwise, we could just blow through this very quickly. But what we want to do is we want to take the squeegee. We're not going to push down like we're squeegeeing water and moving an entire pile. I'm basically going to let the weight of the squeegee, maybe give it a little bit of pressure every once in a while, and the angle, just move this whole pile. So what I'm going to do is set it down at a 45 degree angle, probably a lot lower than that actually, and I'm just going to get it right to the edge well, right before the edge. We don't want to lose a bunch of material underneath your wall or going, you know, onto the tape a lot. So I'm just pulling that whole pile. Again, I'm not pushing down real hard. And I'm letting the weight do most of the work, just the weight of the pole. That's the first thing we want to do. We want to go around the whole perimeter of the area we want to do and just get it getting really close to the edge. Again, see, so notice that I'm applying a little bit of pressure, but not a lot. And it's just laying it down nice and flat. Once we have the perimeter coated, now we're just gonna take the pile in the middle. And we're just gonna go back and forth and we're gonna get that to level out as well. And we're just gonna, we're just gonna fill in the middle of this floor. So we like using the squeegee in combination with the roller. So the squeegee is going to roll this the squeegee is going to spread this material out about 90 to 95% of the way. And then we'll have a roller, and the roller will just simply go back and forth over the top of the floor, and it's going to self-level the floor. It's going to level out the floor the rest of the way. So the squeegee does most of the work. If you don't use a squeegee and you just try to level out the floor with a roller, it's gonna take you a really long time. So now that we pretty much have it spread out, I can kind of see some fixed spots. Like right here, I can see the black primer through. Right here, there's a huge pile. 
So I'm just going to kind of spread it out a little bit more. And fill in those areas as best I can. Because again, we want to do most of our work with the squeegee, not with the roller. The roller is simply just going to help level it out. Right, so now we can't see color there. We can't see color there. Over here on this edge, I can kind of see a little bit of black primer through there. All right, that's pretty good. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I've done this a lot. So I may be making it look a little bit easier than it, than it is. Don't stress out about this. The next step, which is basically the roller, is where the real easy part comes in. So the first thing we want to do, I've already de-shed this roller. This is a 9 inch roller and it's 3 8 inch nap. So I recommend um, for your floor, use an 18 inch roller, but still use an eight, an, a 3 8 inch nap. A 3 8 inch nap with an 18 inch roller about twice the width. It'll make, a, it'll, just, it'll make this go so quick and it's already gonna be fast as you'll see in a minute. And I've already de-shed the roller as well. So I've taken off as many of the loose hairs as I can. So the first thing we wanna do is saturate our roller. So I wanna find kind of some of these thicker spots in the floor and I'm just gonna saturate the whole roller. And then what I wanna do is I basically want to roll it out this way and this way. So I'm going to cross roll it. This roller is going to pick up epoxy from thicker spots and lay it out in the thinner spots. So I'm going to start about in the middle of the floor and I'm going to go one way and I'm not pushing down at all on the roller. The roller's weight is doing everything. I'm going to make sure that the edges hit a little bit. I'm going to bring it back and go this way. It, it kind of takes it a minute to just get into the groove of things. And then what happens is, is when your roller starts to get really saturated, it'll start pushing piles every once in a while to the edge. So what we do is before you get to the edge, we like to pick it up and then roll back into the floor. And I notice kind of these edges are a little bit thinner, but notice how I'm starting to push a pile now. So I lift it up and see how there's a little pile. That's why I start at the end and then I bring that pile back in towards the middle. That's, that's really the biggest key. And then I kind of like glide over to the next area. Pick it up. And I bring that back towards the middle. And see, like I'm pushing a pretty big pile here. That's okay. I just don't want to push it underneath the wall or off the floor onto tape. And I'm just kind of going across the whole floor quickly like that. Now, I'm going slow because I'm kind of explaining things. Um, it kind of shows the working time you have with this material, but you don't have to go slow. You can go, you can go really quick, especially with an 18 inch roller. You notice you have a lot of epoxy you can kind of push it back onto the floor there are some places on this floor that are really thick right here we're starting to get into a pretty big pile so I'm just gonna push it towards a section I know could be a little bit thinner Now we have the whole floor rolled out, pretty much leveled out this way. Now we want to do the same thing, and again, I'm going to do it pretty quickly going this way. So it's the same idea. I'm going to start in the middle, I'm going to push it towards the edges, but not all the way off, and then lift it up. 
before I hit the edge. And now I'm leveling out the floor going the other way. See, because now I have a lot of epoxy over here and not as much over there. So that's what's kind of nice, is it's bringing the epoxy over. And guys, I'm not pushing down. I'm letting the weight of the roller do all the work. So in, anywhere where you have anywhere where you have thinner spots where you can maybe see through it with black because of the primer, that's all right. By the time we're done cross rolling, all of that should go away. Notice how I'm picking it up before I hit the edge and I'm pulling that pile back in towards the middle. There's no sense in pushing all of your epoxy to the edge of the room or underneath your sheetrock or anything like that. And I, I like showing you with the nine inch roller because you can really see the motion over and over and over again. But again, this is gonna go so much faster with an 18 inch roller. Okay, so for 135 square feet, I have about 50 ounces. You don't have to use all the highlights. This is, this is key. The highlights are very subjective. I'm gonna use all of this. Most of the time, we only use anywhere from six to 10 ounces of highlights, depending on the look we're going for. I like the moss green and the copper look. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of try to make some veins going in a similar direction. We're gonna try to create a look that kind of flows and if you're not used to pouring stuff out of a container then you may want to maybe put it in like a like a cheap ketchup bottle or something else until you get kind of used to it we, we do this a lot so some of them are going to go all the way across some of them won't go all the way across but one thing I'll say is try to make it hit the edge. Try to make it look like, you know, if you have a wall here, you want to go all the way to the edge so it looks like that vein is going underneath the wall. All right. Now we're gonna use the same squeegee we used to level out the, the floor at first. We're gonna follow the veins. We're gonna hit the whole entire floor. We're not just gonna like hit one little vein. We're gonna hit the whole entire floor, but here's the key. You're gonna try to keep the, the squeegee just going in the same direction as the vein. Pretty simple. And we're gonna kinda just float back and forth over this floor. But again, I'm keeping the same angle. I'm not pushing down so hard that it's moving a lot of the epoxy because the epoxy is already kind of self-leveled. It's not gonna wanna pick entirely up off the floor. So notice how I'm kinda like working the color. I'm working the color, I'm getting the color to spread out wider than just the vein. If I want to move color over, I can, but I just need to finish it out going the same way. And the idea is that you want to hit the entire floor with the squeegee so that the whole floor has a similar look. 
Now this will work with any color, but I personally like it with these two colors because I like that kind of copper patina look. I'm gonna break up some of these lines a little bit. Now notice I don't have any color over here, but I'm still hitting it with the squeegee. That's important. It's important that you hit the whole floor at least a little bit. And I know it kind of looks wild. It kind of looks like I'm a little bit wild, but I am being careful, but I want to move that color a little bit. That's why I'm kind of letting it kind of shoot everywhere as I pick the squeegee up. But notice how I always finish an area going in the same direction because the overall flow of the floor will be the same then. And I would say with the squeegee technique, the biggest thing you wanna do is you don't wanna leave a bunch of holes in the floor down to the primer, that's, that's the biggest key. So like right here is down to the primer. I'm gonna pull some epoxy. I gotta make sure that that fills in, that's it. But as, as I look across this floor, that's kind of what's going on. And I'm gonna do one final pass with everything. If I wanna get rid of any lines, if you don't want any lines, you may wanna do one final pass. Like notice I'm creating some of these lines with my squeegee. It looks crazy, it looks busy. Gonna knock down some of these lines. Okay, now it's a very close, it's really close to what I want it to be. I don't want any hard lines, like I don't necessarily want those personally. You can, you can keep them if you want, but I, I like to break up the hard lines. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some isopropyl alcohol, 91% or higher, and we're gonna put some moss green in the alcohol. And I'm actually going to do what's called the dispersing effect. I'm going to disperse the floor using the same color as the highlight. So I don't want to induce another color into the floor. I want to use the same color, but I want to give that floor some depth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do small, small little pulls with the trigger, and I'm going to walk backwards towards my exit. So I'm just gonna go back and forth. I'm just gonna mow this thing down, just back and forth. And I'm gonna constantly shake. Let me open this up a little bit. I'm gonna constantly shake this to make sure that I get some of that color going. This is gonna create kind of this awesome like copper, patina, like rust looking color across that floor. So this is going to look absolutely beautiful tomorrow. Uh, most of the dispersing effect will go away, but you'll still be left with some of that and it'll really help create a lot of depth. So. Obviously, I was stopping, I was talking, I was trying to take a little bit longer than you probably will, so you can see that you have a lot of working time with this. But it is a fairly simple technique, and the more you do it, the easier it gets. So as you move across your job, and the job site or your house, your garage, um, it'll just get easier the whole time. A very simple, beautiful design with tons of depth.
We hope you enjoyed the video and love this floor transformation. Want to transform your floors? Purchase your kit in the description below. Don't forget, subscribe to our channel and click that bell button to get notified when we launch new projects that will keep you on the edge of your seats. We will see you next time.